All right. Good morning, campers. We're back. I think I finally figured out how to record a video again. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about classes and inheritance right now. Uh, so let's get rolling here. So say that I want to write a program that I'm going to track student grades. Okay. Uh, the first thing I have to do is I have to figure out what objects are going to be in my program and possibly what classes will be in the program. Uh, so to start identifying objects, you usually think about nouns. Uh, so if I'm going to write a program to track student grades, well then grades is a list of numbers that belongs to a student. And so grades is probably going to be some kind of a variable in a, in a student class. Uh, so because a student has grades, so the students themselves need to be a class and there should be a field or an instance variable for grades. Uh, and so just to refresh your memory, um, each class is defined in a file. Uh, the file has the same name as the class. So if I'm going to create a class for a student, uh, then that has to be in a file called student.java. Uh, the convention for class names is that they are singular, you student, not students. A students would be an array of students or an array list of students. Uh, class names start with an uppercase letter. The rest of the word is lowercase, and then you camel case uh, any additional words. Uh, so to declare a student class, you would click on the new class button in BlueJ. You double click on the class icon to open the editor. Uh, get rid of the template and then enter the beginning of your class. So, for example, you would say public class student and curly braces open, curly braces closed to just make sure that you don't forget that. Uh, then when you save it, when you compile it, BlueJ will save it for you in a, in a file of the correct name. Okay. Um, instance variables. Variables that are associated with an object are instance variables. They're declared inside the class definition, but outside any method definition. Um, and so a student should be a, a student's a person. We'll come back to that. Um, and the student should have an ID number and some grades. So uh, I guess we will need a person class. Um, we'll come back to that later. So we'll come back. Uh, so constructors. Uh, constructors are used to initialize the variables of an instance. You can have more than one constructor, which we've seen uh, in class already, um, as long as the signatures of the constructors are different. Uh, this is known as overloading a method. If you have methods with the same name but different signatures, that name is overloaded. Uh, and so, in, so the way you define a a constructor is you say at the visibility modifier we always use public and then the class name because the constructor name has to be identical to the class name and then an optional parameter list inside there and then it's just a regular method definition notice the constructors don't have a return type uh, you don't need one for constructors they're going to return a reference to the new object uh, and so, if we uh, let's if we create a constructor, let's let's go to let's go to uh, BlueJ. Uh, oh, and look, here's a uh, constructor, or here's a class actually without a constructor. So I've started a public class student. Uh, student has three instance variables: uh, the name of the student, the student's ID number, uh, and an array for the grades. Uh, now, if I want to create a, uh, a student, uh, we go over here and we're going to create a, uh, a public class. Actually, what we're going to do first is we're going to compile this and it works. And then we're going to try and exit. We're trying to create a student, create a new student. We'll call it student one. And there it is. And there are three instance variables in it. And they have, uh, there's no name yet, there's no ID number yet, and there's no grades yet. So that's cool. Uh, notice also that we didn't actually have a constructor. We don't have a constructor yet. And this is because Java gives you a default constructor uh, if you don't declare one yourself. If you do declare one yourself, then uh, 
you, uh, you get a constructor. So for example, if I declare, we'll get rid of this junk, uh, if I create my own constructor uh, and I say public student st uh, string name, then I compile. That compiled, no errors. We're good to go so far. But actually, let's see if I can create a student here. So student Fred equals new student. Oh, 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 unlucky. Danger, danger, danger. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened was um, <clears throat> I thought I had a default constructor, but no. So what happens is if you create your own constructor, Java no longer gives you a default constructor. So if you want a default constructor, you have to make your own, which is what this is. Okay, so now I have a class with two constructors, so I can create uh, students. Uh, if I go here, I've written a, uh, let me clean this up a little, I've written a uh, program called test student, and it just creates a new student, Fred, so this one actually should work now. If I compile it, and then I go here, um, and I do that, it, nothing apparently happened, but it actually did create Fred. In fact, I can go back and I can create a new student with, a deep, with an empty, a no argument constructor, and lo and behold, there it is. Um, or I can create a student with the new constructor, but the new constructor wants me to give it a name, and the new and the name has to be a string. And so, because it says right up there, it says string right up here. It says string name, uh, and so I can make it uh, Fred. Uh, and I go there, and let's move this over so things look better. There we are. So my new constructor. <gasps> look, there's a name. I still haven't put in an ID number, and I still haven't put in any grades, but we're making progress here. Okay, so back to this. Uh, I can add a constructor. Uh, this tells me that I got an error because of the default stuff. You can read this uh, later on. Uh, I'm just going to move on. So we added the no argument constructor, the default constructor for us, and then we tested it again, and we ended up with a wonderful student. Uh, and we also was able to create a uh, student, Fred, um, using the, the other constructor. So we're good there. Okay. So now um, we said that students are people. And so it sounds like we need a person class. So I'll give you a minute to think about what we would need in a person class. So try that. And if you said, uh, I don't know, what? Uh, you need to know a person's name. You may need to know their gender. You may need to know... There's all sorts of things. You may need to know their address. There's all sorts of things uh, that, we can, uh, that we can use. Uh, so, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a name. Uh, our person's only going to have a name for now. Uh, and so um, I, what I'm going to do is make a new person uh, here. Oh, I hope you can hear the thunder in the background. I'm going to make a new class. It's going to be called person. Uh, I'm going to open the class. Uh, luckily for me, it already has a no argument constructor. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of main because I don't need main here. Um, but I do need a, uh, an instance variable, string name. Uh, and I'm going to add a second constructor, public person string name. Yeah. Name, ah, name, name, uh, and I'm going to say this dot name equals name. Remember to use, always use this uh, so that you can make sure that you don't uh, mess up. So I click this, and that's good. But now uh, I want to go to student. Since a student's a person. Uh, if I if I want to have a student be a person, I have to figure out how to do that, and I also would have to get rid of the name for students. So let's go back here for a second. And uh, so what we have now is we have a person, right? And so we have the set of all persons, 
uh, or all people. Uh, and a student's going to be a subset of that, right? So a student is a subcategory of person, right? So every student is also a person. This gives us the, uh, the thing that we always want to remember about classes and objects. Uh, you can tell what kind of a, uh, a class it is if you can use an is a, right? So this is gonna, we're going to do this for inheritance, right? So a student is a person. Uh, and so we can say that all students are in the class of persons. Uh, so that means we have to tell Java that a student is also a person. Um, and we do that by using the word extends. So what I'm going to do when I go to the go over here is since a student is a person and a person already has a name, I'm going to get rid of the name the name, but I'm going to tell Java that the name is someplace else, that other stuff about the student is someplace else. And that's what extends is for. So I'm going to say that the class student extends the class person. So the student class is a more specific version of the more general class person. And it's more specific because the student has an ID number and grades, but all people don't have ID numbers and all people don't have grades. Uh, but it does mean that, um, the, uh, that the person uh, is going to have a uh, is going to have a name, and the student will inherit the name. That's the idea. Uh, so we go back here. So since the student's a person, object oriented lore says that a student is a person, and so a student object will inherit the characteristics of a person. Uh, and Java implements this idea using the extends keyword. Uh, and so, since the student class will add things to the person class, it's a more specific version of person. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, hold on. Let's see what happens here. So, if we compile this, that worked. Uh, if we go back to here, oh, look what happened here. So, all of a sudden, we created this person thing, and we create and we changed student so that student extends person. And look at the arrow. So this is uh, what this is known as. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what this is known as? This is known as an inheritance arrow. This is in a language called UML, and it said that it says that a student inherits from a person. Okay. So the question is, can I actually can I actually still make Fred? Uh, and so this compiles. So let's see if I can run it. Actually, um, let's do this. We'll do this, and then we'll say uh, system ah, system dot out dot print line Fred. Okay, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. So I can do that. And so let's see if I can test Fred. If I can make a Fred. Uh, and it does, and it gives me this weird output. Look at that. Okay, um, so I can make a Fred, and a Fred is a student, and a Fred is a person. Uh, can I make a Fred with a name? Uh, let's see if I can. Um, Fred, compile. That seems to work. Uh, and can I do this? Can I do Fred? Yes, and I get another weird answer. Uh, we'll come back to the weird answers in a minute. So this actually looks pretty good. Um, so I can uh, I can do this. The other thing I can do is um, oh by the way, so you can see name this dot name. Where does name come from? Name isn't defined anywhere in here. No, 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 no. Uh, except that name is defined here. Uh, and we said that a student is a person, and a student inherits. It extends things. And so it inherits stuff from person. And so it inherit it inherited name from person. And then it allowed me to cr create a student uh, with that name. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Uh, okay. So, but back now back to the problem of printing stuff. Okay. Uh, what happened was it tried to print it. Now remember that when I uh, let's see, this is my 
this is my person. I don't care about person at the moment. Uh, when I go back here, when I print Fred, what is Fred? What type of variable is Fred? All right, pause. If you said reference variable, you would be correct. And so what happened was um, when I told system that at the print line to print Fred, Fred was a reference variable, and so it prints the reference. And in fact, what it prints, this stuff here happens to be the address of where the Fred object is located in memory. Except that's not really very helpful. Uh, what we would really like to do is we'd like to print out something informative about Fred. And so uh, there's a method that we inherit from object. Object, remember, is the top level object of everything in Java. Okay? And inside object, there's this method called toString. And it converts stuff in your object into a string, and it gives you back the string. Okay, but when you inherit, so person, we inherit from person. Person inherits from object, so uh, person has this two-string method that we inherit, but we uh, can't, e but there's nothing good in it. It only prints the reference variable. Okay, and so what we need to do is we need to rewrite the two-string method. Okay. Uh, so this is how an inherited, inherited object works. When a method is invoked, we first check that the method in the object is in the object. If it isn't, we look in the parent. And if it isn't, we keep looking through all the parents until we get to object. And if it's there, then we use it. And if it isn't there, it, we get an error. And it doesn't exist. So um, if you don't specify the parent class when you declare a class, then you inherit from object. And you can specify the parent class, um, but our parent doesn't, uh, in doesn't uh, inherit, okay? Or it can inherit, sorry. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to rewrite the two-string method, okay? And this is called overriding, because what we are going to do is we're going to use the same name as two-string that we found in object but we also want to use the same signature uh, as the method in object. And this is known as overriding a method. And so to override the object class's two string method, we add something like this. And that's what we're just exactly what we're going to add to our uh, student method here. So let's go find student again. And we're going to come down here. We're going to add public string because it has to return a string to string and it doesn't take any arguments and now because it's a uh, because it returns a string we have to return something so we'll take return um, the student's name is plus this dot name yeah and that will create a string for us, and it will return the string. And then we end the method, and then we compile. No syntax errors. We compile the tester, and we run the tester again. And ta-da! It prints Fred. All right. So we can override an inherited method. In fact, we can override damn near any, any method that we find. OK? All right, this leads us to the Liskov substitution principle, which is named after Barbara Liskov right there, who won the uh, ACM's Turing Award, which is like the Nobel Prize in computing. Uh, she won that award back in around 2012 or so. And she has this principle that she uh, created about object-oriented uh, stuff and inheritance. And it says, you can swap in subtypes wherever you are expecting a base type to which you respond, huh? OK, so what it means is you can swap in subclasses wherever you're expecting a base class or a superclass. So let's just define those. Uh, any class that you inherit from 
is a super class or a base class. So for us, the student, for the student class, the person class is this super class. Uh, and then the class that inherits is a subclass or a derived class. So in our example, person is a superclass and student is a subclass. Uh, and so the Liskov substitution principle says that if you, to do inheritance correctly, you should be able to substitute a subclass anywhere you use a superclass. So I have a program that uses the person class. I should be able to substitute student anywhere I would use person. Okay? This is actually a very powerful idea. Uh, and if you continue on in computer science and you take CS292, we're all over this idea. Okay? And that's it for now. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you later.